Welcome to the Hildreth Family History Channel and to the second episode of the story of our Hildreth family in America. This is Mike Hildreth, 12th generation of Hildreth in America along my branch of the Hildreth family. James Thomas Logan Hildreth of Marion County, Ohio is my grandfather. Sergeant Richard Stanley Hildreth, who came to the British colony of Massachusetts from Gainford, Durham, England, in 1635 is my ninth great-grandfather. Today is December 16th, 2022. This project started as a Christmas gift to my children, Laura, Brian, Christine, and Jansen. Since then, I have been blessed to personally visit areas in Massachusetts and Ohio where our family lived. I've spent months and countless hours carefully collecting and researching more historical records and making video recordings and taking pictures from my visits. I very much appreciate and want to acknowledge the work done on our family history by my first cousin, David Little, and for his sharing with me. I also want to thank my Aunt Margie, David's mother, for sharing her childhood memories of the Hildreth family. This episode is my 2022 Christmas gift to all my family, cousins and all. My hope and prayer is that our future generations will enjoy this and learn about, appreciate, and respect those who carried us into this world. These individuals in our family history were very much as we are. They were young, they fell in love, and married, and had children. They worked hard, they played, they loved, they made their share of mistakes and had their losses. Each episode references Logan Hildreth and James Thomas Logan Hildreth in the lineage so those related to Logan may extrapolate their relationship to the family presented. This episode too is a biographical sketch of Samuel Warren Hildreth who lived from 1850 to 1921. Samuel Warren's father was James Warren Hildreth James Warren was the first generation of our Hildreth branch born in Ohio. Samuel Warren, in this picture, Logan's grandfather, was the second generation born in Ohio. Logan was the fourth generation. Samuel Warren was named after his grandfather, Samuel Warren, who lived from 1788 to 1863. Samuel Warren, 1788 to 1863, brought our branch of the Hildreth family from Pepperell, Massachusetts to Ohio sometime before 1819. He was a farmer and farming was passed along the generations to James Warren, to this Samuel Warren pictured, to Joseph Thomas, to Logan, and to his sons Virgil and Howard. For those of us who remember as children playing on Grandpa Logan's farm, now we know there were generations of Hildreth children before us who played on family farms too. To get oriented in the lineage, Samuel Warren is number eight on this list, the grandfather of Logan. On the left is James Thomas Logan Hildreth who went by Logan. In the middle is Logan's father, Joseph Thomas Hildreth with his six sons. The tallest boy on the left of Joseph is Logan. On the other side of Joseph are Paul and then Asa. The two smallest boys in the front are the twins Delmer and Elmer, and then Frank. Shortly after this picture was taken, Joseph died. To the right is Samuel Warren Hildreth, Joseph Thomas's father, Logan's grandfather. Logan passed along a family story that our Hildreth family branch had Native American Indian blood. As shown in episode one, all our ancestors have been accounted for and there are no Indians. I have reason to think this Indian story was a cover story that originated with Samuel Warren and will present the evidence in this episode. It's interesting to know what was going on in the United States when our ancestor lived. And when uh, Samuel Warren was born in 1850, Zachary Taylor was the 12th president. When Samuel was 10 years old in 1860, Abraham Lincoln was elected 16th president. When he was 11 years old in 1861, the Civil War started 
and he was 15 years old in 1865 when it ended and when Lincoln was assassinated. Samuel was 17 years old in 1867 when Jesse James and his gang robbed a bank and 23 years old in 1873 when Jesse James started robbing trains. Samuel was 26 years old in 1876 when Alexander Graham Bell conducted his successful telephone experiment and in that same year was Custer's last stand at the Battle of Little Bighorn. Samuel was 28 years old in 1878 when Thomas Edison patented the phonograph, 31 in 1881 when the gunfight at the O.K. Corral happened, 50 in 1900 when the Wright brothers first tested their aircraft at Kitty Hawk, he was 53 in 1903 when Ford produced the first Model A, Samuel was 62 in 1912 when the Titanic hit an iceberg and sunk. He was 64 in 1914 when World War I started and 68 years old in 1918 when World War I ended. Woodrow Wilson was president in 1921 when Samuel Warren died. The history of Union County, Ohio, Taylor Township section says Samuel's father, James, had eight children, four by his first wife, Matilda Taft, and four by his second wife, Elizabeth Lucinda Martin. Elizabeth went by the name of Eliza. It's possible the Union County account has the four and four numbers wrong, as not all the vital records of the children have been found. James Warren, Samuel's dad, lived in the Mount Vernon area of Knox County before moving to Union County. While living in Knox County, James married Matilda Taft on July 30, 1841. Matilda died on July 3rd or 21st in some records, 1847, at the young age of 23. James would have been 28. James then married his second wife, Eliza, on December 19, 1847, uh, also being married in Knox County. Eliza was a widow. Samuel Warren was born on August 23, 1850, in Union County to James and Eliza, and was the seventh of James' eight children. James and Eliza were both 31 when Samuel was born. Pictured is the shared gravestone of Samuel's mom and dad, James and Eliza, in Broadway Cemetery in Union County. Union County neighbors Marion County to the southwest. Taylor Township, in the middle of Union County, is where Samuel's father, James, owned a farm and where Samuel spent his childhood. What is now Union County, Ohio, was settled after the conflict with the Indians ended with the Treaty of Greenville in 1795. Union County was founded by the Ohio government on April 1, 1820. Taylor Township, where Samuel's father, James, bought his farm, was the last township in the county constituted by the commissioners on December 5, 1849. This area was known to be the best quality farmland in the county with excellent, deep, rich, and productive soil with little hilly or wasteland and with streams running through it and plentiful game. James is included in the biographical sketches of Union County Taylor Township in the list of first farmers. James bought 100 acres. The historical account does not say when James moved his family from Knox to Union County, but given that James married Eliza in 1847 in Knox County and Samuel was born in 1850 in Union County, James moved to his new farm around 1849. James and Eliza were both uh, about 30 years old at this time. Broadway Cemetery, where both Samuel Warren and his parents and several other Hildreths are laid to rest, was deeded to the township in 1874 by Mr. P. Cranston. 
This is a map from historical records of Union County, Taylor Township, showing the location of James Farm. This Google Earth photo shows what was James Farm. The historical map shows a farm owned by Charles Adams about a mile away. This is a clue in the Indian story, so please note that the Charles Adams family lived nearby. As a side note, between Ferrisburg and Magnetic Springs is an old, abandoned, unkept Hildreth Cemetery deep in the woods near Bokes Creek. There are at least seven Hildreths buried there between 1862 and 1899. This is a drawing of a Taylor Township farm belonging to Alfonso Young. This picture gives an idea of what the farms looked like during the time of Samuel's childhood. There were steam engines and telegraphs, but no automobiles and no telephones. Samuel Warren likely had little or no formal education. During that time, this was probably common for farmers and farm workers. Shown are two official documents Samuel Warren signed with an X when he was an adult. The signatures shown over the X's are in the handwriting of the person who wrote the official document and then witnessed Samuel's X. Samuel was married twice, first to Miranda Predmore Taylor Hildreth, and then, after Miranda died, to Matilda Rose Barnhouse Tallman Hildreth. Shown are newspaper clippings announcing Samuel's and Miranda's marriage on April 30th, 1870. The left clipping says Miranda Taylor and the right says Miranda Taylor, but with the left it is spelled with an I and to the right it's spelled with an A. This is an example of misspelling in these old records. Miranda Predmore Taylor is an interesting story. Miranda was born on April 22, 1837 in Richwood, Union County, Ohio, to John Predmore and Susanna Dewar Predmore. Miranda had been married to two Taylor brothers and had four children with them, two and two, before she married Samuel on April 30, 1870. Samuel was then 20 with no children, and Miranda was 33 with four children. This was difficult for me to figure out because the top record shows Miranda spelled with an A, and the bottom shows Miranda spelled with an I. When researching Miranda, I found these two records and first thought these two women were probably related, and coincidentally each married a brother. Upon further research of these two men and making a timeline of events, I found this was the same Miranda. The picture on the right shows a section of the 1850 U.S. Census for York Township, Union County, Ohio, and it lists the two Taylor brothers, Josephus and Thomas G. Their father was Jesse Granville Taylor, 1804 to 1874, and their mother was Comfort Ellen Jarrett, 1808 to 1880. The top left picture shows the Ohio Union County marriage record for Josephus Taylor and Miranda Predmore, dated January 14, 1858. Josephus was about 22 and Miranda was about 21 when they were married. And it appears Josephus and Miranda moved from Ohio to Wisconsin about 1859. Their first child, Mary, was born in Ohio about 1858, and their second child, Abram, was born in Wisconsin about 1859. Josephus died in April 1860 in Wisconsin about two years after they were married. No records have been found to explain Josephus' young death. Thomas Granville Taylor, Josephus' brother, and Miranda married on June 27, 1861 in Forest, Vernon, Wisconsin. They also had two children together, Alicia, 
or Ellie, who lived from 1862 to uh, 1876. Ellie died at age 13. Samantha Taylor, who lived from 1865 to 1918. The girls were born in Wisconsin. The bottom left picture shows a Civil War pension application for Thomas Granville Taylor with the filing date of June 1, 1870, listing Miranda Taylor as the widow. However, Thomas did not die during the Civil War. The pension application lists Thomas's service as uh, Company B, 50th Wisconsin Infantry. The picture to the bottom right is from the roster of Wisconsin Volunteers in the Civil War, 50th Regiment Infantry, Company B. It lists Taylor, Thomas G., with residence or place of enlistment of Viroqua, Wisconsin, uh, with enlistment date of February 23, 1865, and it shows M.O., which means mustered out or discharged, on May 13, 1865. The Civil War ended on that same day, May 13, 1865. So it appears Thomas was in the 50th Regiment for only about three months when the war ended. No records have been found to explain Thomas's death. This is the 1870 U.S. Census for Union County, Taylor Township, and it's dated September 1870, five months after Samuel and Miranda married. And it lists in the household Samuel, uh, age 20 at that time, Miranda, age 33, Mary A. Taylor, uh, age 12 at the time, and she was a child of Josephus, Mary died two weeks short of her 14th birthday. Abram, age 11 uh, at the time, child of Josephus. Ellie, age 9, child of Thomas. And Ida, age 5, child of Thomas. Here's a side story about Abraham Taylor. Uh, it's taken from the Marysville Journal Tribune dated February 10th, 1904, and it says his home was destroyed by fire while he was visiting with his invalid mother, Mrs. Warren Hildreth, in this big Miranda. This is an application for appointment of guardianship dated October 26, 1870. It is for guardianship of money and property, and not child care. The application is by Samuel W. Hildreth of Union County, Ohio, to be guardian of property and money possibly to be inherited by Ellie Taylor, age 8, and Ida Samantha, age 5, that involve their father, Thomas G. Taylor. It says personal estate consisting of back pay and a pension that will probably be granted by the United States government to said minors which at the first drawing, if allowed, will probably amount to the sum of $1,000 and real estate 80 acres situated in Vernon County, Wisconsin, valued at $100. It's unknown if Ellie and Ida received this. It's also curious why Samuel would apply for this guardianship instead of Miranda Thomas uh, G.'s widow handling the matter. This is one of the documents Samuel Warren signed with his ex. Now back to the Indian story. I'm going to walk you through a series of records that I think collectively make a strong argument for the Indian story being a cover for a shameful event in our family history and those who knew did not want to pass along. The records I will show you convince me that Samuel Warren's wife, Miranda, was not the birth mother of Joseph Thomas, that Joseph Thomas did not know or would not say who his birth mother was. And um, I will show you the reasons I have to think who the birth mother was based on records and DNA evidence. First, let's look at the story that was passed along. Logan, my grandfather, 
was the one who was very adamant that we had Indian ancestry but wouldn't explain it. When pressed about it, Logan would get angry. And I remember hearing it said that they were a bunch of horse thieves and we didn't want to know. Uncle Howard told me that this Indian story was passed to him, and according to Howard, that I was 1 16th Indian. I don't recall Howard explaining the 1 16th, but for some reason I remember it. If true, doing the math backwards, Samuel Warren or his wife Miranda Predmore would be the Indian, and neither were. Furthermore, there are no Indians in our history back to Sergeant Richard Stanley Hildreth from England, and this has been proven. So why the Indian story? We are going to start with looking at Joseph Thomas's records. Keep in mind, Joseph Thomas was Logan's father, and Samuel Warren was Joseph Thomas's father, and Miranda was Samuel Warren's wife. These records are going to make a strong argument Miranda was not Joseph Thomas's birth mother and present the possibility that Joseph Thomas did not know who his birth mother was. This is the Union County birth record of Joseph Thomas Hildreth, born March 14, 1875. The birth record spans across two pages in the ledger. Other later records of Joseph Thomas say he was born on March 12, 1875. The difference between the 12th and the 14th is likely because paper birth records as we know them today were not given out then and the dates were confused possibly. The correct date, according to this official record, is March 14, 1875. Joseph Thomas's father, Warren Hildreth, or Samuel Warren, reported Joseph's birth. Miranda was Samuel Warren's wife, but the mother's name was omitted on this official Union County record. The birth record below Joseph Thomas's is that of William and Willard, born about two years later in 1877. The mother's name was omitted for Joseph Thomas, but Miranda Predmore was included for William and Willard, this suggests the omission of Joseph Thomas's birth mother's name was deliberate. Why would Samuel Warren not report the name of Joseph Thomas's birth mother? When I first saw this, I thought the missing birth mother could be the Indian. But the Indians were gone out of Union County long before 1875. So why would Samuel Warren omit Joseph Thomas's birth mother's name on his birth record? To the left is Joseph Thomas's and Ada's marriage license. It gives S.W. Hildreth, Samuel Warren, as Joseph's father and Predmore as Joseph's mother's maiden name, Miranda Predmore. We definitely have the right people. To the right is Joseph Thomas's death certificate with information provided by his daughter, Lucetta. It lists Joseph's father as Samuel W. Hildreth but list his mother's name as unknown. Now, giving an unknown answer on a death certificate during this period of time is not unusual. I've noticed many of them. But it is curious that Lucetta stated Joseph's mother was unknown while giving his father's name. Given that Lucetta was Joseph's daughter and Samuel Warren's granddaughter, she would have known if she knew and her father knew. This, along with the missing mother's name on Joseph Thomas's birth record, presents the possibility that Joseph Thomas did not know who his birth mother was or would not say. This is the 1880 U.S. Census Union County, Ohio, when Joseph Thomas would have been about five years old. This census no longer lists the Taylor children from Miranda's marriage to the two brothers, suggesting the Taylor children moved on. This census lists Samuel, Miranda, and their children. James Warren, son aged nine. Now James lived to be 51 and is buried in Prospect Cemetery in Prospect, Ohio. 
John Marion, age uh, seven at the time, son, lived to be 95 years old and is buried in Claiborne Cemetery in Richwood, Ohio. Flora Isabel Hildreth, also known as Floey or Fanny, daughter, age five at the time, um, she married James Wood on April 9th, 1980. She lived to be 76 years old and is buried in Elm Ridge Memorial Park in Muncie, Indiana. William, also known as Willie, uh, son, was age two at the time. Willie lived to be only 25 years old and is buried next to his mother, Miranda, in Broadway Cemetery in Union County. The Union County Journal reported that Willie went to visit relatives in Mechanicsburg and while there contracted typhoid fever and died. Also is a son, Willard, or known as Hornet, age two at the time, and Willard lived to be 75 and is buried in York Cemetery in York Center, Union County. Then uh, we have Sarah Ava Emerson Hildreth, age one at the time, she married Orville Southward on June 24, 1886, and then uh, she married Charles W. Emerson Dodds on November 12, 1912. Sarah lived to be only 39 years old. Sarah died in Detroit, Michigan in 1918 of influenza and pneumonia, the same as on Joseph Thomas's death record. This was during the 1918 Spanish flu pandemic, and influenza and pneumonia were the cause of death in this pandemic. Sarah's obituary states she is buried in Marion, Ohio, but uh, her grave is not listed in Find a Grave. Now, Joseph Thomas would have been about five years old when this census was taken and should be listed between Flora Isabel and William. This census tells us Joseph Thomas, age five at the time, was not living with his father Samuel Warren in 1880. I searched other families in Union County Census and found no one listed who might have been Joseph Thomas. I also searched the rest of Ohio and surrounding states and Joseph Thomas was not to be found. I have found no records on Joseph Thomas between his birth record and his marriage record to Ada Daisy Grant. I looked at all the obituaries of the uh, children of Samuel Warren and have found none that lists Joseph Thomas as a brother. This news record led to finding more records and that began the unraveling of the Indian story. My cousin David Little and I ran across this news story about the same time. The Broadway News, top left, dated June 1, 1876, states that Warren and his wife, Miranda, were arrested and found guilty of assault with intent to kill his mother, who would be Eliza. Joseph Thomas would have been one year and five months old at this time. The bottom picture is a newspaper excerpt from this incident that says Miranda was freed on bond, but Warren could not make bail and was jailed in Marysville. Union County has court records for this period scanned online. I searched carefully in effort to find the criminal records on this case, but never found them. In the course of searching for that court record, I stumbled onto this indictment against Samuel Warren, and this was a major oh wow moment. The indictment is titled The State of Ohio versus Samuel W. Hildreth. Past some legal jargon, the indictment gives the location as the Court of Common Pleas in the town of Marysville in Union County, and the trial date as October 26, 1874. Samuel Warren was 24 years old at that time and had been married to Miranda for about four years. The drawing from the history of Union County is of the courthouse in Marysville where Samuel's trial would have been conducted. Past more legal jargon, the indictment says the jurors do find and present that Samuel W. Hildreth, late of said county, 
on the 29th day of June in the year of our Lord, 1874, with force and arms at said county of Union and state of Ohio, unlawfully, violently, and in a menacing manner did assault and threaten one Lenore Adams, then and there being. And she, the said Lenore Adams, then and there did beat, abuse, wound, and ill-treat, and other wrongs to the said Lenore Adams, then and there did, contrary to the form of the statute in such care made and provided, and against the peace and dignity of the state of Ohio. Past more legal jargon, it says, The defendant Samuel W. Hildreth this day was arraigned, and the indictment being read to him, was asked how of the premises he would acquit himself or plea, says he is guilty in manner and form as he stands charged. Whereupon it is considered by the court that the defendant, Samuel W. Hildreth, pay a fine of the, to the state of Ohio in the sum of $5, and also cost of this prosecution tax to the dollar and that he be imprisoned in the county jail for three hours. Now, a $5 fine sounds small in today's terms, but Samuel had to pay court costs, which were a staggering amount to a farm worker in 1874. And also, the records do not say how much time he had already spent in jail. This summons for the case identifies Lydia A. Adams, second name on this list, as a witness. Lydia is Lenore's daughter. This biographical sketch from the history of Union County, York Township, is about P.C. Adams, Philip Charles Adams. This information is important relative to our understanding of Samuel Warren's indictment and those involved. This biographical sketch gives the name of Philip Charles' wife, Lenore Adams, who went by Lenore, maiden name Green, the woman named in Samuel Warren's indictment for assault and battery. It states Lenore's father was Reverend Thomas Green. It also gives the names of their children, including Lydia A., and states that Lydia's husband was Richard Harris. The assault occurred when Lydia was 15. Later, Lydia married Richard Harris when she was 18. This name, Richard Harris, is an important piece of information when we look at Lydia's obituary. Charles Adams, who owned the farm near James Hildreth, was Philip's father, Lenore's father-in-law. Lenore was born on November 20, 1836, in Rush Creek, Fairfield, Ohio. Her father was Reverend Thomas V. Green, as stated and her mother was Nancy Paxson. The picture is of the headstone of P.C. Adams, located in Broadway Cemetery, York Township, Union County. I took this picture on December 14, 2022. The indictment does not give information on what the fight was about. However, Samuel filed this affidavit for continuance which means he tried to introduce evidence, and in it Samuel gives his side of the story. It reads, Samuel W. Hildreth now comes and files this, his supplemental affidavit for continuance, and says that he expects to prove by said George Brooks that the said Lenore Adams made after him the first assault, that she followed him and struck him with a club, then slapped him in the face and seized him by the hair of his head, and that the complaint against him was and is simply trying to disengage himself from said Lenore Adams, that said George Brooks was present and saw the whole of said and transaction and will testify of present. That said Lenore Adams made the first assault on affiant, this being Samuel, and that he saw no more violence than was necessary to disengage himself and get away from said Lenore Adams, and that the affiant, Samuel, was without fault on the premises. Lenore was 37 when the assault occurred. She was raised in a Christian home by her father, Reverend Green. 
She was married with four children, including Lydia. Samuel was 23 and married to Miranda. Lydia just turned 15. If what Samuel said in this affidavit is basically accurate, the next question is, what would it take to make a 37-year-old mama bear go after a 23-year-old man with a club? Well, here's the math. Joseph Thomas was born on March 14, 1875. If Joseph Thomas were full term, he would have been conceived on or about June 14, 1874. The indictment says that the assault by Samuel Warren on Lenore Adams occurred on June 29, 1974. Uh, this assault occurred about two weeks after Joseph Thomas's conception. At the time of the assault, Laura's daughter Armetha was about eight, Phoebe was about 11, and Lydia had just turned 15. So what would it take to cause a 37-year-old married woman with children to take a club to a 23-year-old man? Ancestry.com DNA matches are measured by DNA units called centimorgans or CM. There are a multitude of mathematical analyses that show distance and probability of family relationship. For purposes of this interpretation, I'm going to focus on DNA matches relative to the question of Joseph Thomas's birth mother. Based on information from the assault, I think Joseph Thomas's birth mother was Lydia Adams, who was 15 at the time Joseph Thomas would have been conceived. That would certainly explain her mom, Lenore, taking a club to Samuel. This is a simple count of others in Ancestry DNA who shared DNA matches with me and who come up in a search by the names of Predmore, Adams, Green, and Harris. To make this statistically sound as I can, all matches counted have a shared CM of 10 and up. With Predmore, Samuel Warren's wife, there was one match. Adams, Lydia's maiden name, 32 matches. Green, Lydia's mother's maiden name, 36 matches. Harris, Lydia's married name, 34 matches. This is Lydia Adams Harris's obituary. It gives her mother's maiden name as Lenora, her father, Philip Adams, and gives her birth date as May 12, 1859. This is the Lydia Adams Harris from Samuel Warren's indictment. Lydia died at her sister's home in Marion. There are statements in this obituary about her husband that don't add up. It says in her early childhood she married Alonzo Harris and that he died several years before in the West. Lydia's husband was Richard Logan Harris. Alonzo was one of their sons, so this could be a simple naming mistake. Richard was born on April 3, 1844 in Knox County, Ohio. They married on March 3, 1877. Lydia was 18 and Richard was about 33 when they married. Lydia was Richard's second wife. Possibly more records may be found to clarify this, but this early girlhood husband who died in the West does not add up and could be a cover story for Lydia, like the Indian story we were told. There are no records of Lydia having any other husband but Richard, and he died, as said, on April 10, 1911, in Logan County, Ohio. This is from the Union County Journal, May 26, 1904. Miranda, Samuel's wife, died May 22, 1904, at home at age 67. This newspaper article says she had been in poor health for four years, and it says she leaves nine children. Miranda is buried in Broadway Cemetery in Union County next to her son, William who died at age 25 from typhoid fever. Miranda's obituary said she leaves nine children. 
She had ten, but William died before she did, leaving the nine. Joseph Thomas would have been number eleven had Miranda counted him as one of her children. In March 1904, before Miranda died in May 1904, Samuel sold portions of his farmland. In October 1904, after Miranda died, Samuel sold more farmland. Samuel married his second wife, Matilda Rose Tallman Hildreth Barnhouse, on July 4, 1905, in Essex, Ontario, Canada. Matilda's parents were Abner Tallman and Mary Middleton. In 1910, Samuel Warren was a 60-year-old laborer living in Sturgis Ward II, St. Joseph, Michigan, with his wife of five years, Matilda, then 52, along with stepson, John Stewart, 19, a laborer, and stepdaughter, Mary M. Stewart, 12. All were born in Ohio. How Samuel came to have stepchildren by the name of Stewart is unknown. Possibly Matilda Rose was married to a man Stewart before Samuel, but no record of such has been found. Sometime before 1920, Samuel and the family moved to Marion, Ohio. The 1920 U.S. Census, Marion Township, Marion, Ohio, for the Samuel Hildreth family list Samuel, age 69, Matilda, age 60, James Stewart, stepson, age 40 at the time, born about 1880 in Ohio, Ethel Paramore, granddaughter, age 14 at that time, born about 1906 in Michigan. After Samuel Warren died, Matilda married Isaac Barnhouse. Matilda died on March 14, 1938, at age 79, in Flint, Michigan. She is buried in Old City Cemetery in Flint, Michigan. There are no online photos of her headstone. Samuel Warren, Joseph Thomas's father, Logan's grandfather, my great-great-grandfather, died November 24, 1921, at the age of 71 of enlargement of liver caused by yellow jaundice. This was about two years after his son, Joseph Thomas, died in April 1920 at the age of 44 in Michigan. Joseph Thomas died of the 1918 Spanish flu pandemic when a wave went through Michigan. Samuel was living in Marion, Ohio on Fountain Street when he died. Samuel was buried on November 27, 1921 in Broadway Cemetery, Broadway, Union County, Ohio, back home with his family and, ironically, with those involved with the assault. His grave has not been found in this cemetery. It is unlikely a gravestone from that time would be deteriorated and unreadable. Possibly Samuel Warren never got a gravestone. No records have been found so far about Joseph Thomas between his birth and marriage to Ada Daisy Grant. Joseph Thomas was not mentioned as a brother or half-brother in the obituary of any Samuel Warren's other children. Joseph Thomas does not appear in the 1880 U.S. Census under Hildreth, Adams, Green, or Harris. The 1890 census was destroyed by fire in Washington, D.C. If records could be found that identify who raised Joseph Thomas, possibly that could conclusively prove who his birth mother was. The evidence presented points to Lydia Adams being Joseph Thomas's birth mother and Logan's grandmother, this being the origin of the Indian story. If this is true, we should recognize and give love and appreciation to Lydia for carrying us into this world and include her in our lineage. It is possible my grandfather Logan did not know who his grandmother was, or would not say, to keep the family from knowing what happened in June of 1874. Such as it was, hopefully those who knew at that time found it in their hearts and in their faith to forgive Samuel Warren. Had this not happened almost 150 years ago, I would not be telling you the story, and those of you who descended from Joseph Thomas Hildreth would not be here to listen. 
I would not be bouncing my great-granddaughters Ivy and Kinsley on my knee and telling them the Christmas story here in a few days and would not be waiting patiently for my first great-grandson. Trying to understand God's love for us and his plans is like looking at the backside of a perfect tapestry stitched together by the perfect master. All we can see from our side are our mistakes, our sins, the knots, the cut threads. When we get to heaven, we will see the front side of God's perfect, beautiful tapestry that is our lives woven together by his amazing love. Merry Christmas, family. I love you all. Mike.